From the south side of Chicago, it's Cleveland Indians baseball tonight. Let's try this again. Indians and White Sox. Chicago taking the first game of the doubleheader. Indians with a chance to split the twin bill now here in the nightcap. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. A uh, tough loss in game one. 7-6, the Indians lose it. The ultimate run score because of some just some sloppy play defensively. Too many walks in that one inning. They battled back, made a game of it, but they fall short. Now they turn to Cody Anderson, who's only made one good start this year. Ironically, it came against this ball club in this ballpark. Hopefully he can channel that because he needs a good start tonight. Well, well, let's hope so. He matched up against Chris Sale in his first start here this year. I think it was April 9th. He gave up two runs on, uh, in six innings. Yep. He had a chance for the win, but the bullpen gave up that run. You're right. So hopefully he can come back and feel that uh, that mojo going in this ballpark. He'll be matched up against Eric Johnson, who has made one start. He's a 720 ERA. That start came against the Boston Red Sox, so we all know what um, how that team yeah. can get. But anyway, this is going to be game two of this, and the Indians need a win because after tonight, you go ahead and you're going to face a couple of tough left-handers in the last two games of this series. So this one was a big, a big ball game for the Tribe. Not to mention the Central Division standings. Now the Kansas City Royals are breathing down their neck for second place in the division. We'll be back with tonight's first pitch as the Indians try to split the doubleheader against the Chicago White Sox behind Cody Anderson and company. Jose Ramirez, Juan Uribe will have the rest of the starting lineup straight ahead. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. And by your local Toyota dealers, visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Header. Let's go downstairs to Andre Knott, who has more on the Indians' uh, new look lineup here tonight. Jason Kipnis moves out of second base and into the DH spot. Yes, it's something that Terry Francona has been wanting to do for a couple of weeks. This is the way he can give him a day off, but still play him. He wants to do the same thing with Francisco Lindor very soon. So he said he'd take advantage of it tonight with the double with the double header going on. All right, thanks, Andre. And 
Just like that, we're ready to go. Rajay Davis will step in against Eric Johnson. And the right hander's first pitch is in there for a strike. Well, Johnson, a 26 year old right hander, 6'3, 230 pounds. Davis cuts and misses. And it's quickly 0 and 2. Well, what did he do? He got cramp? I think he's got a cramp going. And out comes yeah, Terry Francona. It might be. You're right. That athletic trainer, James Quinlan. It's a cramp, is right. He just stiffened up. You could see he couldn't. Couldn't hardly put any weight on that right uh -oh. leg. Uh oh, I see him grab the back of that right hammy. You see it? it went for the back side of it. Boy, just weird on, on a swing. He says he's okay. We'll yeah. see. It didn't look good, did it? I think I'd have to throw that same slider I just threw and make him reach for it. With that leg there. It's going to be tough to do. That was the right leg, correct? Yeah. Yeah, the O2 is slowing away. You could throw it out there, but I'm not swinging at it. <laughs> it's because he couldn't reach that one. Strike three call. One down. The rest of the Indian starting lineup tonight looks like this for Terry Francona. It's brought to you by Progressive. Talked about Kipnis DHing Francisco Lindor batting third. Then it's Santana, Ramirez, and Uribe who starts at third base and bat six. Lonnie Chisinau, Chris Jimenez, and Michael Martinez at second base batting ninth. And here is Jason Kipnis now. Kipnis one for four. This afternoon with a double and a run scored in that three run eighth inning. And a foul right back. And he's in the hole 0 2. Well, you look at our Northern Ohio Hyundai starting pitcher for Eric Johnson. Just the one start. It came against the Red Sox in five innings, three walks, six strikeouts, a couple of home runs. He was down in Charlotte and wasted no time. Well, he struck out the first two hitters of the ball game. Let's check the uh, defense behind Johnson tonight for the Sox. Looks like this: Cabrera in left, Jackson center, Eaton right, Frazier at third, Saladino at short, Lowry at second, Abreu at first, Avila behind the plate. Yeah, more or less the same lineup. They ran out there this afternoon with the exception of Carlos Sanchez who was optioned back to triple A after the first game of the doubleheader. Sanchez sent out and Tommy not sure how you pronounce his last name if it's Conley. He was added as the 26th man. And uh, Johnson was added to the roster with the uh, Sanchez move. Lindor lines one toward right field, and it is caught somehow by Adam Eaton. I think he lost it in the lights at the very end, but just kind of stuck his glove out there and hoped it would go in, and it did. And the inning comes to an end. The White Sox are coming to bat.
Chicago where the White Sox starting lineup for game two of the doubleheader under manager Robin Ventura looks like this Adam Eaton Tyler Saladino Todd Frazier and it's Melky Cabrera Jose Abreu Brett Lurie Alex Avila Abisail Garcia and Austin Jackson Northern Ohio on the starting pitcher will be Cody Anderson for the tribe Cody looking for his first win making his seventh start giving up a lot of hits giving up 10 home runs in his 32 and two thirds innings so it'll be very important the way this ball was jumping out of here in game one to keep it down fastball outside ball one. Side two and zero. I kind of wonder what happened along the way for Cody Anderson because that first start against Chicago, he did go six innings, gave up six hits. He only walked a, a couple, struck out a pair. Looked a lot like the starts he made a year ago, but right. after that, nothing has looked like the Cody Anderson of a year ago. Well, I'm going to look for movement on some of his fastballs. Hit to right, deep. Chisholm makes the catch right in front of the wall for out number one. Well, you're going to run it down, and the ball's carrying in this ballpark tonight. Warm weather. Chisholm runs it down onto the track in front of the fence. Bring up Tyler Saladino. I think the biggest thing for me is that for Cody Anderson, he's got to work in and out. Too many pitches that we've seen him get hurt on were just flat out in the middle of the plate. I mean, it's one thing we, we talked about it before. Okay, he wanted to increase his velocity. Hey, that's fun. But velocity without command is really no big bonus for a no, pitcher. Not at all. Hey, and and you know, last year, let, let's face it. You know, the league gets used to it. they. You see somebody one time or something, you may be able to sneak through it, but. A breaking ball is going to be very pitch. big for him. Is yeah. that that curveball right there? Use that curveball. He gets his first strikeout. You see, there's a good curveball, a good spot down in the strike zone. That'll be our circle K strikeout. Get Saladino to chase it. And with two down, Todd Frazier to the plate. Frazier homered his first time up this afternoon. And he leads the league in home runs. The only other White Sox in franchise history to lead the American League in home runs. Bill Melton. Your man Bill Melton. Yeah. And Dick Allen. Dick Allen, yes. Both in the early 1970s. Uh-huh. What do you think about it? There's a broken bat line to the left for a knock. He's busted a couple of bats here this afternoon, but he's he's, uh, he's happy to sacrifice a bat for a hit, I'm sure. No question about it. Let's check out that drive defense brought to you by Jeep. Ramirez in left, Davis center, Chisholm Hall in right, Uribe and Lindor on the left side, Martinez Santana on the right, Chris Jimenez doing the catching. Andy Fletcher has the plate in the nightcap. Home plate umpire for game one, Joe West gets the night off. Melky Cabrera this afternoon at 0 for 4 with a walk and a run score. 
it was Cabrera who was the runner at third base on the fly ball to right field. He was the guy doubled up at home on the great throw by Michael Martinez. Now he shoots one to left. That's going to get down. It's going to be trouble. Cut off though by Jose Ramirez and Frazier has to stop at second base. You know, back to back two out hits one a broken bat and one just a little inside out flare job the other way. Yeah not much you can do here that's just good hitting by Cabrera staying on the baseball shooting it the other way. But that's coming with two outs Ramirez a good job cutting it off. They scored four runs with two outs in game one. Here is Jose Abreu. One for five with a double in game one. And a fastball strike to the outside corner. Just missed inside, but a good pitch. Well, you know, we've seen, he swung at a couple of them in the first game in there, and that's what he's been. He's been swinging at some pitches, uh, you know, that are tough to hit, whether they be inside or out. Breaking ball and a swing and a miss to run the count to one and two. That ball stayed inside as well. I'm not necessarily sure you try to throw that pitch in there, but it stayed in there and he, he gets a swing and a miss. Trying to get out of the inning. Here in the first, a one ball, two strike count. And it shoots foul to the right. Out of play. And now Abreu awaits the one two pitch again. And Cody Look ran it right inside on him. Love it. He'll go to the bag. Santana says, I'll take it myself. And the inning is over. Couple of hits, no damage done. We're scoreless after one in Chicago. Sox defense for you in the outfield from left to right it's going to be Cabrera Jackson Eaton 
on the infield. Frazier at third. Saladino gets a uh, start at short. Lowry at second. Abreu at first. Avila behind the plate. Carlos Santana will lead off the second inning for Cleveland. And he takes a strike. Santana 0 for 3 this afternoon with a walk and a run score. Actually make that 0 for 4. He grounded it out to end the game. to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Indians uh, have been struggling with runners in scoring position over the last several days Ever since they left Cincinnati and for Cody Anderson to keep the ball down. Did a good job to get out of trouble in the first. Jose Ramirez clobbered a big home run for the Indians in the first game of the doubleheader. He got them to within a run with that two out two run homer in the eighth. And now he's going to start this game off with a blast to deep right field and the Indians will play from in front. Jose Ramirez with his second home run of the day. And it's a one to nothing Indians lead. Jose his third home run and I'll tell you what the ball jumped off that bat. He missed his target. They were looking to go away. He came in and he let him know that got out of here in a hurry. So the Indians are going to play from the front tonight. And a nice hand for Juan Uribe as he comes to the plate here in Chicago. One of the heroes of that 05 team that won the World Championship. Johnson, the guy that made six starts with Charlotte this season. He went two and one with a 3.57 ERA. I mentioned 26 years old. Came out very aggressive in inning number one. Got the first out against Santana. Then Ramirez hit him. Now he's falling behind. Play to the right. Go and it's a walk. So one out base runner now for Lonnie Chisenhall. Well, Indians baseball is live with the MLB.com at bat app. Stay connected all season with radio broadcasts, video highlights, stats, news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball on your smartphone and tablet. Chisnall looks, it's 2 0. <laughs> Missed inside, two balls, no strikes. And that 
took off on him. Ball three. Yeah, I wish it's that home run. He's been all over the place. He did make a mistake with that pitch as far as location. They wanted it away. He threw it in. But. Lonnie got one to rip and fouled it back. See a 3 0 swing by Chisholm Hall there. You get the fastball, boy, and that's what you do. You green light these guys nowadays if they know they're going to get a fastball. It's pretty get after it. And a 3 1 pitch. Ran it up the ladder, full count. Yeah, might have helped him out there. Could have been on first base. Lonnie's a good uh, low ball hitter, so for him to swing at a 3 1 pitch up here, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Look at it on our Nissan pitch tracker. It was up and away. That's a pitch that, you know, that's not his, his cup of tea. He likes the ball down. Runner goes, and the pitch is fouled right back towards us. Now, a little too tall. Headed to the upper deck. But you can see Francona starting the Uribe in the full count. They're going to, Lonnie's going to put it in play. He's off and running. So Terry says, all right, let's go. Get aggressive. 1 0 Cleveland on the home run by Jose Ramirez here in the second. Runner goes. And it's ball four. So back to back walks after the home run by Jose Ramirez. And that's going to bring Don Cooper yeah. out to the pitching mound. Yeah, you see, you, you got a young guy out there. And, you know, sometimes he did make one start earlier here in his ballpark. It was against the Red Sox. But the last thing you want to do is start walking. He came out so aggressive throwing strikes. And I guarantee you that's exactly what Cooper's telling him right now. Look, don't be afraid. Pitch to contact. Let him go. Don't nibble. When you when you start nibbling, you get in trouble when you're a young pitcher. It's tough. He doesn't have that kind of stuff to pitch when you fall behind the count. Not many guys do. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you have got to, you know, don't give the hitters that much credit. You got to go after him. Well, Eric Johnson will now face Chris Jimenez with two on and one out. Jimenez. Three for 18 at the plate since rejoining the Indians this year. And takes a fastball over the inside corner for a strike. Such is the life of a backup catcher. The playing times can be sporadic. It's hit and miss, so you. You get into a, a tough spell offensively. It's tough to climb out of it. You're yeah, not, but you're not the, getting every day at bats. As you know, the, the catcher's job. You handle that pitcher. You your game. You handle the, the the pitcher, and you throw runners out if you can. And anything you give them offensively is a bonus. And he's been around, so he knows. Kia in the driver's seat shows us uh, tonight that Chris Jimenez in his career has has pretty much owned the White Sox. Let's just say it, he's owned it. 60 average, two homers, scored seven. Right back to the pitcher. Johnson goes to second. There's one on the first inning ending double play. Okay, so maybe owned him was a little strong. But the home run by Jose Ramirez has the Indians out in front early, one to nothing.
on top, bottom of the second. Alana Rebe, the former member of the 2005 White Sox team that won the World Series. <laughs> telling, telling those guys in the back, I'm watching you. Can't be too many guys left, can there? No, no. You know, the trainer and, and you know, yeah. guys like that. Gosh, you forget, Rick. That's Sl 11, 11 years, years ago. Yeah, right? exactly. There's nobody that stays around that long. Brett Laurie pops it up on the infield, and this will be a rebate into foul ground. And back into fair territory, one away. Andre. Yes, as Cody Anderson has gone through some of his troubles, we've talked about his stuff, or maybe his new lost weight. Mickey Calloway, though, thinks it could go into confidence. Here's our hear right sound of the game. You know, a lot of it's confidence. You know, you can have the best mechanics in the world, the best stuff in the world, and if you don't have confidence, it's going to be tough to go out there and succeed. So, you know, he's working on that. He's working on getting the ball where he wants to and getting that little bit of sink back that he had last year when he's successful. And, uh, you know, once he's able to do that, that'll help his confidence and get good string of starts together and uh, should, should be good to go. Yeah, that, very true. Confidence is, is a big part of this game, but I like what he said, the sink back that he had. Yeah, that's movement. something. Yeah, yeah, and that's movement and, and keeping the ball down. He had, if you remember, we uh, I was amazed when we used to say, boy, him and Tomlin, the second half, they were as good as anybody getting outs on three pitches or less. Right. You remember? I mean, he'd go through games, three pitches or less. Let's let's do that. And he was hitting his spots. He was keeping the ball down. That is a big key for somebody. I mean, he was just fastball changeup. He didn't really throw that curveball much. Now he has a curveball that he has to incorporate, work into his game, and take the hitters off, especially if you're going to be a starter. That's a good fastball. He threw it by Alex Avila. That's what makes Josh Tomlin so fun to watch. He comes out there and what does he do? He he knows exactly what his role is. I gotta cut it. I've gotta sink it. I've gotta hit my spots. I gotta know where I can make mistakes and get away with something where they don't hit it out of the ballpark. He realizes that. Well, Cody, that's the guy I'd be talking to. And Cody's a young pitcher. We forget, you know, this is still his first kind of turn through the big leagues. Last year was his first time, but he didn't even spend the whole year in the big leagues. So sometimes it takes a, a little He's time. 25 years old. Let's yeah, you, you can't forget that. Boy, this one gets away. Avila, he's got to really jump rope to get out of the way. Goes face plants in. Well, Avila's a guy. He's you know he's had enough injury problems and dealt with knee issues. Oh my gosh, how many times have we seen this guy get hit? You know, in the mask, in the yeah. head with concussions and, and injuries when we were when he was with Detroit yep. playing against him. Josh is playing with that's the Indian strength and conditioning coach Joe Kessler. Those guys don't torture anybody. Well, you got to find something to do during a game, man. This is game two. It's been a long day for them. The 3 2. Yeah, that's a hit towards first. Santana with a nice overhand toss to Anderson. Two down. You know, when we talk about confidence, it reminds me of uh, an old saying that I, I don't remember who told it to me first, but it's a former major league pitcher who said, look, it all comes down to when you have the ball in your hand. And you decide what pitch you're going to throw. You have to have the conviction that that's the pitch. He said, "It might be, you might have your third best pitch, but if you're convicted to throw it, you're going to be successful. You can have your best pitch, but if you don't feel right about it, and you yeah, throw it. You, there's doubt. Usually, yeah, something we, bad happens. You have to. Uh, yeah, that's one way of putting it. No doubt. Eliminate doubt. But you know." When you're at this level, you have to have success to do that. Yeah. To start believing in yourself, and you're working on something, and you're trying to improve, and you're trying to get over, you know, out of your slump, whether it's a hitter or a pitcher, you 
have to see some success. If, if you don't, it's a lot harder to get you rolling. I mean, you've got to feel good about yourself every time you leave the field, or at least something positive. There's a little flare. It's going to drop. So all three hits for Chicago. Really nothing for Cody to hang his head about. I mean, no, that's fine. You you live with that. And all three hits coming with two outs. No, there's Garcia getting jammed, and I'll tell you what, look at Martinez. He, he's got some range. He gets out there. That ball just falls in. There's nothing you can do about it. And now the number nine hitter, Austin Jackson, who came into today with four hits in his previous nine games and had three hits this afternoon. Had a bases loaded walk to drive in a run. Well, when the White Sox got off the to that tremendous start that they had, they were getting key hits. It's not like they were hitting the cover off the baseball like we just saw Boston doing. These guys were doing it by pitching a little different way. Oh, what a catch by Michael Martinez. Boy, this guy's having some kind of day defensively and at the plate for the Indians in this doubleheader. He goes up the ladder and steals a hit away from Austin Jackson. One nothing Cleveland through two and shoot. by Miller Light. Third inning and it's the Indians leading the White Sox one to nothing and Michael Martinez will lead it off. Boy, he got some bright batting gloves. You can see him playing if they turn off the lights. <laughs> All about the color. I'm starting to notice that in the last couple of years I've seen guys with batting gloves that don't match the team uniform right. at all. But right. David Ortiz, I think, and Carlos Santana. I've seen some guys with the the neon colors in their batting gloves. Look at Vila saying he may not he might not have uh, tried to bunt it, but it certainly was a good pitch. I mean, this is looked to me like it was right down the middle. He called it a ball. I don't know if the he was running out there to bunt it and then all of a sudden didn't bunt it. Called the ball. Outside three and one. Popped up foul and that's going to find its way into the seats. Eric Johnson is a California product from Los Altos High School. 
Went to Cal Berkeley. Pitched them into the World Series back in 2010. Out right back. I mean, you think about how baseball rich the state of California is. This guy was all state three times in high school. The 3 2. Foul. No, it stayed fair. And it's like a bunt. And they throw him out anyway. Good play by Alex Avila. Yeah, I didn't know if he was going to get out there to get it because I knew Johnson wasn't going to get there. But Avila jumps out, makes the throw, and he is uh, he's quite a ways out. Turned and throws, and they get him by a big step. For, for Eric Johnson, it looks like he, when he can pitch in front, he, he's so much better. Rajay pops it straight up. Lori, two down. Yeah, it seems like he, he gets behind. He, he tries, and then he, he he doesn't stay aggressive. And that's the first time through the lineup now. Indians will have an idea now what he throws. Jason Kipnis struck out his first time up there. Takes a strike. Kip one for four this afternoon with a double. Back home in Chicago, the high school he went to was the one they used in the movie uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, yeah? It's on the north side, right? North side of Chicago? Yeah, it was at Glenbrook North. Upstairs, one ball, two strikes. A smash. The second baseman Rory smothered it and throws him out. The Indians go one, two, three. Middle of the third in Chicago, and the Indians lead it one to nothing. It'll be Dollar Dog Night. 
Adam Jones and the Baltimore Orioles are coming to town. Plus, fans, you can enjoy $2 Miller lights from 5 to 7 in the right field district. They'll have a post game fireworks show as well. Just go to Indians.com for your tickets. Well, here in the bottom of the third, the top of the order due up for Chicago. Adam Eaton takes, and it's a first pitch strike. Eaton set a fly ball to deep right field. Lonnie Chisnall made the catch just in front of the wall to start the game for Chicago. And he pulls this foul. It's 0 2. Like it. Curve ball down. This guy, is a, he's a good table setter. He sets a tempo when he can get on base and make things happen for the Sox lineup. Wow, close, but just missed inside. Okay, one two pitch. If you go in there, you go in off the plate, which is the way to do it. You make hitters aware. You know, he jumped up early 0 2. Swung on and missed. He strikes him out. Cody Anderson with a second strikeout. Elevated the fastball here. And that one had a little comeback to it. Gets the swing and miss. And Tyler Saladino, the batter, struck out his only time up in the first. Dino's trying to bring back the mustache. Get the eye black at night. Does it have an effect with the lights at all? I don't know. I don't know. Never maybe. did to me. It's usually daytime sunlight. Maybe it just looks cool. Well, maybe it does. I, I, I don't know. I, maybe it helps him. If you look good, you feel you good. play good. You play good. And a one two breaking ball got him. Third strikeout for Cody Anderson. Two down here in inning number three. There's the curveball. Comes back. I think in his last start, he only threw about two or three of them. But there's one right there. You can see the hitter out in front of it gives him just a, another pitch that he has to look for. Is the curveball to go with your fastball and change up. Todd Frazier, who singled on a broken bat job to left his first time up. And a breaking ball low and away. Well, I've seen a lot of breaking balls tonight, and like, as I mentioned, his last start he threw two up. So and he has a good one tonight. Nice movement there with a change up. He watch the movement and it's going down. There it is. In, in today's game, the game one, Clevenger, when he had his change up down, it was a very, very effective pitch. That sucks. 
deep left center field and it's going to be a ground rule double just out of the reach of Rajay Davis who tried to make a backhanded play on the ball deep in the gap but Todd Frazier two for two. Yeah and all our hits now that's the fourth hit have come with two outs that's not a it's a fastball where you want to stay out of that zone with Frazier up there it hits the track bounces into the seats for a ground rule double. So it keeps the inning going after back to back strikeouts for Frazier that's only his fifth double of the year. Yeah he likes to hit him long likes to hit him over the fence not bounce him. Well Rick that's three innings now for Cody Anderson tonight where he's retired the first two batters. Yeah. And then giving up a, a hit to keep the inning going. That well, one was that, that, no cheapy though. That no. was the hardest hit ball he's allowed tonight. Yes, by all far. the other three were. You're right. They were good pitches that they got base hits on. It's better than one of them starting off an inning with a hit, or two hits, and get him going. That sets the inning up. Tough to score when you you get the first two out in an inning. Stringing together two, three hits. Cabrera shoots it in the left field, and it's misplayed by Ramirez. The White Sox have tied the game. Cabrera, big turn at second. He'll stay there. Well that ball was hit hard and I, he wasn't going to I don't think he could have scored from second base there. But what he did he kept charging that ball he had to gather himself and get under control he tried to charge it worried about I think the base runner Matt. And you have to catch it I don't think they were going to send him. See he was going to stop him. Yes and he then was. You see those hands coming up it was hit too hard. You just got to catch the ball and I think Ramirez came in like he was an infielder. And tried to play that ball. You have to make sure you catch it first. And he was still coming in on it, and that ball was hit very hard. So you're going to get a base hit in air with no RBI. Oh, no, they're going to give him the RBI, believe it or not. Well, you think we're going to stop? Talk to Bob. All right, so it's an RBI single, and then the air. Is that correct? Watch the hands go up at the third right base coach. Oh, oh, okay, oh. Go ahead, go ahead. But you know he's got to wait and make sure that the guy doesn't catch the ball. If he catches it, he's not scoring. There's a strike to the outside corner on Jose Abreu. So they come back and tie it up with two outs now. And they have five hits. Swing. Oh, he said he went around one and two. Erwin Danley says, "Yes, you did." Now he'll have a chance to go talk to him at first base when he's done with this at bat. That was close enough. I I can see that call coming from the side. It was out in front of home plate. I've never seen this guy caught in between as much as he has been tonight. In the first, you know. Yeah, I would agree I, with I, that. I, I mean, this guy is usually locked in. But he looks uh, he's, he's swung at some pitches that we normally don't see him do it. So I would say right now I can see why he's not hitting that number four hole or the number three hole. But let's hope it stays for a while because this guy when he's locked in he's he's a great hitter 30 homers and 100 RBI his first couple of seasons. And he's always done very well against the tribe, and I think he has more home runs and ribbies against us than anybody. Another good off speed pitch, and Cody Anderson impressive tonight. Unfortunately, a defensive miscue cost him a run here in the third, and the White Sox have tied the game.
Corey Kluber Jersey Day. And it will be the midnight navy blue jersey given away on Saturday. The tribal host Buck Show Walter and the Baltimore Orioles as they come to town. 12,500 fans will get that jersey. Visit Indians.com for your tickets. First, but Abreu gobbles it up one away. The stat of the game is brought to you by Buick. Coming into play today, the White Sox had the best ERA in the American League at 3.15. That's top to bottom as a pitching staff, including the bullpen. You notice on that uh, Seattle Kansas City they're all coming up on the Indian schedule here in the very near future. Oh yes. Speaking of which. The Indians will. Uh, take on the Texas Rangers in the middle of that homestand you Darvish. Will make his first start of the year Saturday so the Indians will miss him. In that series in Cleveland. He's been out quite some time has. And the Indians also won't see Alex Gordon, who was put on the DL today with a fractured right wrist. He'll be out at least a month, it sounds like. He just got the stock is back, didn't they? Oh, that's who he ran into. He ran into Mustakas and broke his uh, oh, wrist yeah, here. It, oh, okay. It was on Sunday. Mustakas is day to day with a bad knee after running into Gordon. The one two pitch to Santana is hammered to left center. That's going to get down and go to the wall. And Carlos will go into second base safely with a one out double. His first hit in the series, and the Indians' second hit tonight. You know, when you see Santana hit, take a swing like this and hit it to, it's a left center field like we have a, a, a few times this year, you wonder why can't he do that every day? Because he plugs the gap, they play him to pull. He got a pitch to his liking and then shoots it that way. That's like money in the bank right there. So a one out double for Santana. Now Jose Ramirez. It was his homer that got the Indians on the board. It was his misplay that allowed the White Sox to tie the game. Now it's got a chance to put the Indians right back in front again. Well, he ran into a fastball in the second inning. Got out of here in a hurry. A big home run in, in game one to get him right back into the ball game. That's happened to him today. Yep. Two down is our injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Shows you that in addition to Gordon, Shinsu Chu on the DL for the Rangers with a hamstring injury. Lucas Duda, he's out with a back problem, and Sonny Gray, we told you about yesterday. Down for Juan Arriba. I think the Indians have had a 
tough time doing in the last let's say four games is hitting with runners in scoring position. Three for their last 33. Two one pitch. Foul back to even the count. In scoring position and a rebate. And it's caught on a line drive to end the inning. Middle of the fourth, tied at one in Chicago. Bottom of the fourth here in Chicago. T-Mobile greater coverage of baseball. Cole Hamels of the Texas Rangers yesterday went eight, gave up one run, punched out 11, only walked a couple. The Astros can't beat the Rangers. They, I mean, they have dominated them last year, and they're starting to do the same thing again this year. Been a surprising year in the West with Seattle leading it to this point, but Texas is right there on their heels. Yeah, there's Texas 6 0 against the Astros this year. Angels decimated by injuries. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to turn that around anytime soon. And you know, Houston, the team that was in the postseason last year, but they can't get out of their own way. Sometimes the burden of expectations can be just yeah, too much to look at. They're 17 and 28, and they they can't beat that team, Texas. That's in front of them, and Seattle's playing pretty well right now. Not to say that Houston can't come back, but boy, they have dug a hole that's very deep and awfully tough to get out of. Because you can't, you know, once you start playing good, you get back into it. You might have a good month. Can you stay hot the rest of the year like that? Well, if you can't beat the team in your division, Texas, it, that makes it even. More different. Rangers 19 and 6 over the last two years over Houston. 
2 2 to Laurie, nice and he pitch. got him looking. Boy, that curveball has been something for him tonight. It really has. Five strikeouts now for Cody. He has really, this has been a very good pitch for him. This could be a confidence builder. I'll tell you right now, if you want to take something positive, take that away from it. That curveball has been special for him tonight. Well, he's had hitters either not expecting it or not being able to react to it because they've got that sort of. That's something that they're buckle. not looking for. Yeah. He hasn't proven. I mean, he's proven to these guys he can throw that for strikes now. Now they're going to have to start looking for it. And now that may make his fastball a little better or that changeup effective as well. Alex Avila bounced out to first base his only time up. And he swings at the first pitch following it back. Missed outside with a heater. And a count one and one. Good pitch. There's the fastball, even at 96, but with movement. It was almost like it was a front door sinker. Watch it start out and then. Bam, Bingo. right back over the inside Bingo. corner. Movement. Oh, wow. Pretty good looking slider right there. I'll tell you what, Jimenez is just doing a nice job with him tonight behind the plate. He's back there. He's throwing different pitches than we normally see him throw, and I, I, I like that. Here comes a changeup. Nice. Struck him out with it too. <laughs> he is making him use every pitch he has. Rick, that's six strikeouts, and the last seven hitters, the, the last seven, he's retired five of them all by strikeout. Yeah, and now watch the curveballs he's throwing tonight. Look at the location. Down, down. We know he's got a, for an excellent changeup. That's the pitch right there. That's the one that's really. Stepped it up a notch. You see him shake his head. He wasn't looking for it. That curveball has made a huge difference tonight for him. There you go. Can it get me over fastball in 97 with movement. Uh, this is uh, this could be that uh, that start that Mickey Calloway was talking about for him to give him a little confidence. So this has me wondering now. If sometimes a pitcher throws too hard and loses the movement. The velocity is still there tonight. He's got movement so it must have something more to do with grip of the baseball the grip or arm Maybe. slot or how you know there's got to be something more it, to it. It could certainly be the grip of the baseball. That's all there is to it. He's using all his pitches yeah. tonight. That's what I like. He's not stuck in a two pitch, uh, you know, fastball changeup. I'm sure he's had a start where we've seen him throw this many breaking balls. I just can't remember. I, I don't remember seeing it this year. I, no, I'll tell you what, he's, he's making the hitters, he's keeping them honest. There was no hitters that he was keeping honest this year. There's feeling another. good about that curveball because he called for that one. Why not? Good and for you. Garcia retired as the White Sox go one, two, three. And Cody Anderson, impressive tonight in Chi Town.
Levin Furniture. For the best deals on furniture and mattresses, shop Levin's. By your Northern Ohio Honda dealers. And by the Cleveland Clinic. Access anytime, anywhere. One one ball game, fifth inning. Lonnie Chesnall, Chris Jimenez, Michael Martinez for Cleveland in the fifth. Let's see if they can get Cody Anderson a run here. Eric Johnson flips a curveball up for strike one. Chesnall walked his only time. Up. Only have two hits. Home run and a double. And a ground ball single in the right center field for Lonnie. Your lips to his ears. Lead off man aboard for Chris Jimenez. This summer make a difference in bike to cure in Velasano takes place July 29th through the 31st and every dollar raised advances cancer research at Cleveland Clinic team up get involved at Velasano.org. Runner goes and Jimenez puts it in play. There you go. And the runner gets in the scoring position now as Jimenez is thrown out. I like that. That's I something. Too. You know what? Instead of bunting, and, and Jimenez did a great job of just getting the ball on the ground. As a hit and run, you don't try to hit the ball hard. You just put it on the ground and let him go. Great clip of the game from earlier today. Michael Martinez. And two doubles and a terrific throw from right field to erase Melky Cabrera and turn a double play. And as Terry Francona said afterwards, that kept him in the game. That gave him a chance. And you know, he doesn't make that play. They score a run, and you know maybe the inning gets away from him, and then it's a blowout. But he said that that gave him a chance. Yes, it did. But they have bases loaded, nobody out. They only got one. And he said the other thing, I think the other most important thing is Terry said it made them have to use their bullpen because we kept it a close game. You know, they had to go to their their top guys, the setup sure. guys, the closer yep. had yep. to work. So yep. unfortunately they fell a one run short, but Martinez came out here in game two and made another terrific play defensively. Two pitch foul back. Mike Clevenger in the middle who got the start earlier today. Kind of mixed results. Sort of like his uh, first start. It was good in, in one pitch. He made some bad pitches in that game. One pitch will really hurt him, though, bad. The yeah. three run homer, obviously. He'd give up a three run jack. They need to get a hit with a runner in scoring position, is what they need to do. Martinez is not going to get it done. Climbs the ladder. It's his fourth strikeout now. <laughs> Two down, and you go to the top of the order, Rajay Davis. By the way, you were telling me before about Texas dominating Houston this year. I just read where the Astros have had a lead in one game against Texas this year. They went ahead one to nothing in the first inning Is on April twenty first. Right? Rangers scored three in the bottom half of that same and inning. That's and been that's been it. it. Yeah. The only time they've had that's, a lead. I'm telling you that for whatever reason they've been able to dominate them. I remember it from last year. Well, AJ Hinch came out after yesterday's game and kind of, I think he was sending a message to his team, basically said, "Hey, they've beaten the hell out of us," and he said, "This has got to stop." I can't stands no more. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what he said. He doesn't know what else to do. 
And that's tough to do. You remember the Indians did that to the, the White Chicago. Sox here a couple of years ago when they were 17 and 2. Yep. And I mean, sooner or later, the next year, the White Sox, they They've got fed up. They, they absolutely did. You get fed up and you got to, you can't stand it anymore. This year with the Detroit Tigers. Yeah. So far, yeah. You know, you can only take so much. Well, Rajay sitting there with a 3 0 count. Jason Kipnis would be next. Does he turn it loose 3 0 here? No. Yes, he does. He does. High and deep to left. Cabrera back. It is gone to Souvenir. City. Good for him. Oh, Rajay loves a 3 0 fastball down the middle, and he clobbered it. A two out, two run homer. His fifth home run of the season, and the Indians take a 3 to 1 lead. Well, you got to love that 3 0. I didn't think he was going to swing, but he certainly did, and he did what you're supposed to do with it the high fastball. He got it. He got on top of it and he gives the Indians a two run lead. Well done. That's what you're supposed to do on three and oh. Green light means go. <laughs> Jason Kipnis 0 for 2 on the night. Pops one up foul out of play. It's been the long ball today for the Indians. Yeah. When they hit two in the they first three, game. three in the first game, two two runners and a solo shot, and they yeah. scored all their runs in this game on home runs. So they have five. I pop, shallow left. Saladino, the shortstop, makes the catch. And the inning is over, but Rajay Davis gets the 3 0 green light and drives it out of here. The Indians have the lead. For the tribe here in the nightcap, putting them back in front. Cody Anderson goes to work, bottom of the fifth. And Austin Jackson leading off takes ball one inside. Yeah, two out, home run. You gotta love it. Let's see if Cody can handle that and put a one more zero on the board here. 
been in a nice rhythm, nice groove today. Yeah, he has. Making some nice quality pitches. Bullseye. He's ahead one and two. 46 of the 70 for strikes. His only shortcoming tonight nice. as Jackson goes down on strikes is that he's only retired the side in order one time, even though he's had the first two hitters out in every inning thus far. Well, there's seven strikeouts now. There's the changeup going down, swinging over the top of it. So good movement there. Fastball's moving, the changeup's moving, and he's got a nice curveball. The good news is. That he seems to have figured something out. He is pitching very well. The bad news is, at least in the very short term, is that no matter how this finishes up for Cody Anderson tonight, this is a one shot deal for right now. Right. He's the 26th man. So for fans who are wondering, this is his only start in the short term. He's going right That's back fine. to AAA after the ball game. But whenever I want that, that time elapses and he's available to be called back up again. He's put himself right in the front of the line in terms of consideration. Well, he, you go back down and you you continue on pitching what you're doing here tonight. You don't worry about that. He's figuring something out. That's for sure. You know, Carrasco is it? Andre gave his report on Carrasco. It won't be long before he's coming back either. Nice play by Lindor. Santana couldn't quite, or did he? He did scoop it out, but they're saying that Eaton beat the play at first. Well, wait and uh, take a look at it and see. Boy, dynamite effort by Lindor. First of all, I didn't think he was going to be able to cut it off before it went up the middle. Terry Francona is going to challenge this play. As we take another look, he's out. What do you think? Well, I don't know. Let me see here. I, you know, I think he might have been fooled by the look. that ball. Man, that's you know? awfully close, though. Oh, I know. Is it enough to overturn it? I don't know. But, you know, I think with that glove coming back, with that ball going in, I think the ball beat him. Absolutely. Now, can they overturn it? I don't know, but you know what? It, did he hold on to it or did he scoop it back out? Do you know what I'm saying? Looks like he caught it clean, and it's a quick decision. There oh! you go. He's out. The Indians get the call. Yes. And there are two down in the inning. Nice play. Good pick on uh, both sides by Lindor and then Santana, too. Made a nice pick, so he they were right. Here's the go. there's the scoop. Here's a nice angle right there. In it's the in glove. the glove. No, right there you go. And he held on to it. Very good. I give credit. The last couple of replays that I that I can remember now have been bank. I mean, quick, like 30 seconds or less, and they're making decisions. We were in Boston, and it was quick. I like it. Two down for Tyler Saladino, and a first pitch strike. Center field, though, big part of the yard. And Rajay puts it away. Cody Anderson has retired seven straight Sox hitters. And the Indians lead it by a score of three to one.
can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with the all-new Fox Sports Go app. Download it, take Sports Time Ohio and the Indians with you wherever you go. Eric Johnson goes to work here in the sixth inning with the Indians leading at three to one. Francisco Lindor leading off. He's 0 for two. And Avila couldn't believe yeah. that wasn't called a strike. He started to throw it back. Now he's going to hear something from the White Sox dugout because he went to throw it back and did the double take. Did that earlier on a bunt in this game. And that's low two of them. Johnson has a nice slider he's thrown tonight as well. He's mixed his pitches. It's pretty much he, he had one little hiccup where he wasn't aggressive. He was nibbling. The pitching coach went out and told him just relax. That was after Ramirez home run. Three two, and Lindor hammers it deep center, left center, and Jackson runs it down. Boy, he tracked that ball well, very well. He's still very good at chasing them down. He had to cover all that territory out in, uh, in Detroit for many years. He he's one of the best at going to get him. Look at him. great route, perfect angle, and made it look easy. I was that ball say was hit that. into the alley. Yeah. He was the guy that uh, ran down that one ball in the ninth inning where there should have been a perfect game. For, oh, in uh, Detroit. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Against the Indians? Yeah, wasn't um, he? Was that Victor that hit it? No. I'm trying to think. Let me. Uh, no, that was after Victor was gone. Yeah. Who was that? Foul right back by Santana. It was Bruzelonic. Yeah. That hit. It was, uh -huh. I think it was, I don't know if he was a pinch hitter or what, but he he hit that ball into the gap. He had a mile to left center field, but he ran it down. Yes, he did. Two strikes for Santana, who doubled the left center in the fourth inning. See, Santana's gloves are not quite as flashy as Michael Martinez, but he's got the, the bright neon outline yeah. and the trim. Ball truly was like a, a stone skimming across a pond. Yeah. That thing went over the dugout and went about 25 rows back. That's the only place he could have hit that ball. Did you see where it yeah. was on the inside corner? Now the 3 2. It went up and away, but not away to where Santana couldn't get to it and he'll stay alive. Says third base umpire Gabe Morales. Threw that slider down and in, got him to chase it. In game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. 
Jose Ramirez gave the Indians a 1-0 lead with his second home run of the day. Homered in both games of the doubleheader. White Sox came back and tied it on a two-out RBI hit by Melky Cabrera. And then Rajay Davis with a two-out, two-run homer of the fifth with the Indians back in the top. Jose Ramirez. We just had that graphic up there a little while ago. Jose, the first uh, Indian to double hit a home run both games of the doubleheader. Not that long, a couple of years, but remember the doubleheader that Mark Whitten had when he was with St. Louis? Yeah. What do you have, like 10 Five, RBIs or some 12. crazy thing like that? Five homers, 12 rookies. Against Cincinnati, I think. Yes. Down in the Riverfront Stadium. He <laughs> 12 of those RBIs uh -huh. in one game of the doubleheader. And 13 for the day. It's amazing. Now that's a day to remember. Wow. A 3 1 pitch to Ramirez. A strike call in full count. In the air to left. Routine play for Cabrera. And the Indians go one, two, three. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. It's Cleveland three, Chicago one. Putting savings and access to tribe rewards and today's tribe rewards game two is Gomes. Visit Indians.com season tickets for complete details. Frazier has single double scored the White Sox only run tonight. Breaking ball here right to the third baseman Aribe. One down. Let's go down to Andre Nato as uh, some insight on the Chicago White Sox offense. Well, Matt, the talk here in Chicago was about the great start that the Sox got off to at 17 and 7 in the month of April. Now, in this month of May, they're 10 and 10 after the win earlier today. And a lot of people in Chicago are wondering do they have enough offense? In April, they got a lot of clutch hitting from a lot of different guys. Hasn't shown up this month. Do they have enough offense to win the AL Central? I know Terry Francona before the game says he's just happy that they're back in the back and we can look at them close. Yeah, I mean everything evens out. They were doing it with pitch, and they were they were getting clutch hitting. 
you know they're not going to hammer you to, to death if you make mistakes they have a lineup that could be pitched to especially I would be concerned with this guy up next the Brayu who looks like to us I've never seen him that way well they can definitely be pitched to. I, I tell you what I find interesting along the lines of, of what Andre was talking about. Here are the White Sox. So you get two Chicago teams in first place in baseball in this city. And yet the White Sox have been outdrawn by the Cubs almost two to one. Well, they do every year, it seems like. Okay, let's not even compare the two teams because you're right. That's not really fair. But the White Sox are fourth from the bottom in attendance in the what are they have 20,000 people a game. League. They're averaging 20,000 yeah. a game. Now the Indians are dead last averaging 14,000. I mean here's Chicago first place team. They had a fantastic April. What more can you do to try and get people well excited yeah, or nothing. capture their I mean, attention. And now you're coming up into Memorial Day and I think it's been like that with every every city bad weather but fans don't come out. You know if they don't start coming out there. They're missing a pretty good team. They played well in the first 40, 45 games. They they played three more games than the Indians have. We're making up this one. Oh, a great you goes fishing and strikes out. Eight K's for Cody Anderson. And a really solid performance here tonight as he has retired 10 in a row. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk proud partner of the Cleveland Indians call 1 800 Elk Ohio and by Ford built Ford tough. Cody Anderson has turned in a dynamite performance here tonight and I said to you at the open of the telecast his first start of the year. Yes. Was here against yep. these White Sox and he pitched really well. Is there something about Chicago. I don't think so. He just looks like he's figured something out here. It's it sure does. Yeah he was matched up that first start against Chris Sale in that game and matched him pitch for pitch. Had a no decision but had an opportunity to get a win. And the bullpen gave it up but I'll tell you what. He's better tonight than he's been this to me is his best start all year and walked anybody. He's he's been in total command. And actually they sh the, the Sox shouldn't be on the board if Ramirez caught that ball in left field they would have stopped the run. You know they ended up giving the guy an RBI but still it doesn't matter he's he's been great tonight he's been fun to watch. Uh oh Juan Arepe tees off and drives it deep left center field gone. Arebe's second home run of the year. 
And it makes it a 4-1 Indians lead. Oh Big boy. one blasts one into the cheap seats here in Chicago. Ball flying out tonight. Three homers now in this ball game. And that's uh, you know that's that's been the problem uh, for Johnson. He's he's pitched well, but he's made a few mistakes, and the Indians have hit some mistakes out of the ballpark. Lonnie Chisinau pops it up out of play. <laughs> Some fun down there, aren't they? Why not? And Lonnie rips one the first, but Abreu there to gather it in. Check the pitch down and away. It leaks over the middle of the plate, and you know, he knew it too, didn't yeah, he? Yeah. Well, he's been swinging the bat. You remember the line drives he hit in in Boston? Those three doubles consecutively. He hit three hard line drives and. That ball was down and he just elevated that one. Chris Jimenez 0 for 2. One out here in the seventh, and the Indians now leading it four to one. They have hit six home runs in the doubleheader. Yeah, I mean, they only have five hits today in the second game, but three of them have left the yard. Look at Mike Napoli over there giving Juan some love. They had seven hits in the first game, and three left the yard. They had the Three homers, three doubles, and a single. Game two, they've got three homers, a double, and a single. Love the long ball. It's a nice one that when it when it comes, one swing. That guy's loving it too. Chris Jimenez wraps a single back up the middle. One out base runner for the tribe now here in inning number seven. Let's go down to Andre Knott. Juan Arebe, obviously a guy that has a lot of respect and admiration from his teammates, and he's obviously a guy who has a lot of fun playing the game. He has he? a lot of fun. The thing Terry Francona said is he's been trying to be careful with how he plays him and when he plays him, and with the injury to Michael Brantley and having to play Jose Ramirez in left field, he's tried to ask him, hey, you know, am I playing you too much, or do you need to sit down? The other day he was going to sit down, and Uribe goes, no, he's starting to swing the bat well. Well, since then he's got three doubles and a home run. I think we might see him a little bit more over the next few days. Funny how that works. You yeah. know, you, you swing the bat well, you feel a lot better, don't you? <laughs> well, of course. There are no days off. When the weather starts getting warmer, you yeah, everybody wants to play. You know, and he notoriously is a slow start. I mean, this guy gets better when, when the weather warms up. Oh, Terry Francona is a a veteran manager he's been around a long time and he knows how to work those guys in when you've got a 37 year old Juan Arebe, a 38 year old Marlon Bird he knows he can't run those guys into the ground. So he's been able to pick spots and work those guys. In and out of the lineup. Martinez 0 for 2 here tonight. And he lifts this one to left field where Melky Cabrera can make the catch. Two away. Top of the order, Rajay Davis. 
Last time up, it was a 3 0 pitch. And at that time, it was a 1 1 ball game. And he Boy, did he ever. It. Yes, he did. He did to that 3 0 pitch, which you're supposed to do when the guy gives you the green light. You hit, hit it hard. It like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean you rarely see it, but when you and, and that's what surprised me because you know he's a leadoff man or hits ninth. Not many guys get the, the the green light on three and oh, but boy he got it and he took advantage of it. And that opened it up. We're able to add one more home run here in this inning and make it a 4-1 game. I suppose that's why usually on a 3-0 pitch, if a guy swings, he either hammers it or he pops it up. Because you're trying maybe to do too much and you just get that longer swing and you pop it up or you just whatever the case is. Yeah, you get the pitch you think you're going to get it, and you, but you should hit it hard if, you're, if you get it. That's what that's the whole intention of swinging at it. Yeah, you can't be late on a three. You better not pitch. get jammed on it or <laughs> anything like that. Well. Here we go again, but different situation now. Yeah, he won't be swinging. Now I say he won't be swinging here again. Well, Eric Johnson remembers all too well, I'm sure. And he missed wide. He made sure he didn't just throw one down Broadway. Yeah, you know, he may be done now. Here comes Robin, and that will be it for Eric Johnson. He goes six and two thirds innings here tonight, but he gives up. Three home runs, a couple of solo shots, and a two run homer. And all told, he allows four runs on the night. And the Indians have the lead. The Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen has been made. And we'll be right back here to Chicago with the Indians up four to one. a hero here in Chicago homering tonight against the White Sox here in the seventh inning new Chicago pitcher is Matt Perk just made his major league debut four days ago and he worked an inning in the third of scoreless baseball against Kansas City. Former third round pick of the Nationals. 2011 he was a minor league free agent signed by the White Sox this past offseason.
Kipnis with a line drive base hit right back up the middle. And that's going to score Jimenez. Davis in the third. And the Indians lead is 5 to 1 as Jason Kipnis picks up his 27th run batted in on the year. There you go. That's what you want to get a few of those runs in with runners in scoring position. Two outs, so they. Kip gets a big two out base hit now. Makes it a five to one game. That run is going to be charged to Johnson, the starter. Francisco Lindor with a fly ball to right field, caught by Eaton to end the inning. Well, the Indians dialing long distance in Chicago. Ramirez goes deep. Rajay on a 3 0 pitch, and Juan Arebe returns home to Chicago to go deep as well. Is back and include your first drink. You can grab some friends and catch the game from the corner or at the uh, new drink rail out in left field. District tickets only available online at Indians.com. Swing and a miss by Brett Lorry here in the seventh inning. Lorry 0 for 2 on the night. Bounce it into the ground. Shortstop Francisco Lindor throws him out. It's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Light. You gotta love looking at this. Uh, it's uh, an array of good pitching by Cody Anderson. I mean, the curveball, the changeups. He's moved the fastball around. Has been in total control tonight. He hasn't walked anybody. He strikeouts. He has been dealing. And I mean. Balls put in play. There was maybe one hit hard. But boy, the first three hits, you know, he made good pitches. Yeah, this is a good sign for Cody and the Indians. Alex Avila, 0 for 2 tonight, takes a strike.
Jeff Manship and Brian Shaw getting loose for the tribe. 60 out of his 90 pitches have been for strikes. Wow. 95 miles an hour and just a bit outside. It's three and one. And now a full count. That's when you know you've got it going. You make that pitch, it's just a bit outside to come back through the same pitch, but you move it two inches over and you get the call. And just blew him away with a great changeup. Yeah. Wow. Yes, indeed. He's Number nine for Cody Anderson. I just really like the way he's used his pitches tonight. He's worked it. You know what I mean? He's he's used everything, and you don't know what you're going to get at any time. And that curveball has given him that third pitch. He come back, and his money—that's his best pitch—is the changeup. Yeah. But it all stems from that first pitch fastball, or getting a fastball over and locating it for strikes. You mix in the curve, a good change, nine strikeouts, no walks. Obviously, El Garcia. He had a base hit in the second. And he grounded out in the fourth. Breaks his bat. Martinez snares the liner. And that's 13 in a row retired by Cody Anderson. is presented by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Five one Cleveland leads it eighth inning. Cody Anderson is night over. As he gets handshakes from everybody in the dug, tribe yeah. dugout, what a job! What yeah. a job! Boy, that's good, confident, good for the. Uh, you know what? I, and you know everybody in that dugout is very happy for him, man. He, he oh, he's a good guy. Up. He works hard. You, you, oh, right. you root for him. Yeah, you root for him. And he came up, and uh, he's got something positive to to build on right now. Carlos Santana, one out of three on the night. Battle of Florida going on tonight. Miami beating Tampa Bay seven to six. With 
that win. Miami it is now 23 and 21. Tampa drops to 20 and 22. They lost three in a row. Kansas City pummeling Minnesota tonight, eight to two in the sixth at Target Field. Yeah, they're starting to play a little bit better too. Big chopper to third, Frazier. And Santana retired one away. Sunday, the longest race on the NASCAR circuit takes place. It's the Coca Cola 600. 5.30 Eastern on Fox or watch all the Memorial Day weekend events on Fox Sports Go. Tigers beat the Phillies 5 to 4. Another and Detroit one right game for the Phillies. Is back to 500 at 22 and 22. And if Kansas City wins, they'll keep pace with the Indians. to Jose Ramirez punch to center right at Austin Jackson who back a few to make the grab two down. Yeah the only team really out of it is Minnesota there everybody will be at five on with Detroit's win tonight. Yeah. And how it's funny it, it was working that way remember when Tampa was over there and they got back to the 500 mark and now they're there they slid back mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, all of a sudden you look at it, and Minnesota now has the fewest wins in all of baseball. And we talked about how bad things were for Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta has one more win than the Twins now. Well, it won't be long. Cincinnati may be right there with them. Yeah, Cincinnati at 15 and 29. They've lost seven in a row. I think they're out on the West Coast tonight. Rebay went too far. Juan with a home run his last time up. Angels out in front of Texas 2 0. They're in the ninth inning at Arlington. Albert Pujols in his 569th career home run. That's a lot of home runs. I don't know who that was for the Angels, but Charlie Nagy's got to feel pretty good about that. You go into Texas. It's Tro Tropiano, I think. Was, okay, uh, that's his. You know what? That, I think he pitched a good game as uh, the start before as well. It's a final. Yeah, he yeah. got the win. Shut him out, two nothing in Arlington. That's impressive. Yeah. A rebate with a smash to first, picked on the backhand side by Abreu, and that'll end the inning. Last half of the eighth coming up.
With a couple of hits tonight with runners in scoring position. And they've just continued to hit the long ball, which is always yeah, fun. It's been about the long ball today. A lot of fun for Cody Anderson. He kept the ball down, he kept it out, he kept it in, he kept yeah. it off the plate. He, he just pitched he, he was 13 in a row. Best start of the year. He was outstanding tonight. And Brian Shaw comes on to work the eighth. Austin Jackson leading off for Chicago. You know, his, it seems like everything he throws cuts, cuts, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, you don't know. The slider has a little hump in it. You know, that's tilt. a one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. But I mean, it's tough. It seems like everything he's throwing is he's like a, a, a left hander, except he's right handed. That's the one pitch sometimes right there. It looks like Rick, his foot maybe goes a little bit more towards the third base side and he kind of cuts himself off. He can't get out. That's the one time it seems like he'll throw a ball a little straighter than usual. But if his arm gets clear, he gets really good movement on just about anything he throws. It's hit pretty well. Right center, long run for Lonnie Chesenhall, and he can't make the play. And on his way to third goes Austin Jackson, and he'll be in with a leadoff triple. Lonnie was there. He had leather on it, but just couldn't pull it in. And it will go as a leadoff triple for Austin Jackson. Yeah, he had a long way to go his right. He's on the run. He's on the run. And boy, as an outfielder, you get that. If you get leather on it, you certainly want to catch it. But he goes down on the warning track. Great effort. Right off the end of the glove. I mean, right off the fingertips. Good effort, but he comes down and Jackson ends up on third base. Well, now Adam Eaton, 0 for 3 on the night. Maybe the batter. Upstairs, ball one. Bullseye to the outside corner to even the count. Maybe easier said than done, but for Adam Eaton, all he's got to do is put the ball on the ground, and the Indians are conceding that run at third. Unless it's sharply hit to one of the corner guys. No, it's you don't worry. You're up. You're up four. You're counting the outs now. Just get your outs. Yeah, it's two and two. Between these two, and it will come your way at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Josh Tomlin and Chris Sale, the matchup. Two undefeated. The undefeated. Yeah, exactly. The 2 2. And a chopper to third. Foul ball. 
Nice little scoop there by Rebay, even though it was yeah. a foul ball. <laughs> I mean to tell you, that was an in between hop, and you uh, just, just throw the glove down at him, wasn't even looking. <laughs> and now he's acting like he wanted to throw it. He knew it was foul <laughs> then. Two strike count. And another foul ball. Saladino waits on deck. The 2 2. Another foul. <laughs> Big matchup tonight in the National League East. Washington hosting the Mets in New York spanks him 7 to 1. That's Bartolo Colon who got the win. He's now 4 and 3. Gio Gonzalez took the loss for the Nats. Down in the dirt. Cardinals trying to cool off the Cubs. St. Louis beating Chicago 4 3 tonight. The Giants got him. Yeah, they won two out of three. They were out in San Francisco. Yeah, Bump Garner last night to be. Yeah, up. one nothing. Pitched eight innings and drove in the run. How he's, about that? He's something else. Yes, he is. The 3 2 pitch. My goodness, how many foul balls well, is it back? He's a tough out. I mean, he's making them work right now. And this, you know, he's just trying to get on the any way, shape or form, man. Foul it off, foul it off. It's the second batter that Shaw's faced. He's already at 15 pitches. Yeah. Well, yeah, look at it. He's peppering the zone. He's missed up top with three, but he has been everywhere. So this is the 11th pitch of the at bat. Good one. Got him looking. Oh, a beautiful pitch. He knew it. On the outside corner. Well, he come up and he, he made a dandy. You're right. It caught him. He wanted to flip the bat, but he knew it. Good breaking ball. There's your 3 2 slider right there on the outside edge. Tyler Saladino who is 0 for 3 on the night. <laughs> Chased a hot fastball 96. I mean, you got no chance there. And he's shaking his head. Going, what am I swinging? At? Yeah, that's what you're right. Uh, that's one as a hitter. You see it, and after you swing at it, you oh, just you go, What am I doing? Like you, you know, you can't catch up to it. See that's that's 95 miles an hour and that thing was moving like a banana. It had the curve. Not quite heard it that way before. Moving yeah, like a know. banana. <laughs> it's I said, late. It's getting I late. Said, <laughs> I said, let me think. Oh, does that mean that it's going left or right? <laughs> <laughs> One ball and two strikes. This has not been bad. This double half. What are we about six hours on the Think of the one we had a few years ago, and it was like. I was taking abuse from all the cameramen because. Oh, I, that doubleheader with the yeah, rain and all that was right. That was the crazy. rain out. I, I was yeah. taking abuse from Mike, one of the camera guys that we had up in here, because I played in the longest game over in Old right. Comiskey, 26 innings, and they say everything <laughs> revolves around you. Everything has to be the longest when you come to Chicago. They say you come and they run off. They do. 
<laughs> I don't feel so good today, boss. I gotta call in sick. They take a day off <laughs> when the when the Indians come to town because of me. The Archie effect. High two and two. Beats it into the ground. The rebate's coming home, home and they got him. I was a little shocked he wanted to come home there, oh, but they get the eye. How about Juan Arribe saying, no, 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 you will not score here. Well, they get the out. I'm, I'm glad they did. He comes home and he's going on contact. The throws right there, and then Jimenez just lets him slide right into it. Well, there are now two down. Let's go, Todd. Frazier pops it out of play. That's one of those plays where I guess, hey, if you can make the play. You keep it a four run game uh, you keep the, the well, four run uh, lead. I, that's I yeah. I, I, as long as you get the out I you know I, I just expected him to go to first base. You know I expected him to go for a double play in Boston. And well, he came that home. one was a little. Peculiar that one definitely. I mean you, you're down to a number of outs just take the sure thing yeah. you know the sure out that's across the diamond you throw home they get the out no big deal you can't say anything. Joss probably glad because it doesn't got cost him a run. Right? Now the one one. Trying to finish this inning strong. You don't want to let this guy get loose. Give the White Sox any hope here. Hop back out of play. Second base goes Saladino. Pretty sure that'll be a little wild pitch. Yeah. I mean, he had to go all the way back over there, I would imagine. Man, all of a sudden, this inning, it's almost 30 pitches now for Brian Shaw. Well, this can happen to him. You know, you come out here, sometimes he just ha he can't find it, and he he's all over the place. Well, it doesn't help when you have it at bat like Eaton did. Yeah, he, pitches. Uh, what happens usually in those at bats? It's something that happens after that long at bat. But he made a perfect pitch to Eaton to get him on a three-two pitch. What was it? Eleven or twelve pitches? Eleven pitches. The problem here too is that if he ends up walking Frazier, then you get Cabrera at the plate. He, he's flirting with allowing Chicago to. Get right back into this game. Even though it is late, get two down on the eighth. Trying to slam the door on her thumbs. Now time is called. Hot 
popped him up. This will get him out of the inning, or it should. Lindor is under it, and the inning is over. The Juan Arribe with a heads-up play at third cuts down Austin Jackson, and the Indians will go to the ninth, up by four. And total car care comes your way next here on Sports Time Ohio. Alan Jensen live here in Chicago. Are they going to be on the field after the No, they'll they be up, up here. here. I'll be right here. Come on, you got to go down to the field, get some flavor of Chicago here. Well, they may turn out the lights on. I know. That's they not won't all. Be able to That's see. not all they might do to them. <laughs> Bottom third of the order here. And Lonnie Chisholm takes inside ball one. Matt Perk came on with two outs in the seventh. Gave up an RBI single before getting the final out. Worked to one, two, three, eight. Chicago does have a righty up in the pen. That's who they called up for their. 26th man today, didn't they? Yeah, Tommy Kane. Lonnie pulls that. It's a fair ball behind the bag of Brayu. One away here in the ninth. And it'll bring up Chris Jimenez. One for three with a single and a run scored. Jimenez would be the good guy to talk to about Anderson tonight. He had him really. Uh, I was impressed the way those two work together. Rudder, much better result for the tribe so far as opposed to game one where they were chasing from behind the whole time and never were able to really catch up. Yeah, but the way they hit the home run ball today, it gave them an opportunity to get back into the game yeah. and they were down four. Yeah. You know, to get back in there and the, as, as Tito says, you, you made them use their, their bullpen, their their A line, their front line bullpen guys. Had a chance. Broken back. I'll tell you what, the next couple days are going to be tough. Pat O'Brien playing the game back in the fifth inning. Rajay Davis with two down. It's a 3 0 green light. He didn't want to change his number to 3 0. He's got 2 0 on his back. <laughs> but boy, he hit that 3 0 pitch, and uh, that really, that's a. 
That's special. You don't see that too often. Three and zero. Oh. Rajay tied the game down in Cincinnati over the weekend with a uh, was that a ninth inning home run or eighth inning home run? It was ninth. And that's again they went to 12 innings and ultimately beat Cincinnati. But that was a big home run for him. He had a great series against the Reds. Six home runs in a doubleheader, Six, most since seven, 19. Wow. Seven, that predates you. Yes, it does. Wow. One in game one and five, five in game two. two. Redburn, that had to be in Cleveland, right? Not in the old Met. How was Bloomington for home runs, Rick? Was it a home run friendly park? It was. Uh, no, it was okay. It wasn't mammoth. Indians go in order. We go to the bottom of the ninth. With the Indians all smiles so far tonight. Cody Anderson started it. Cody Allen looks to finish it. He's got Cabrera, Abreu, and Laurie due up in the night. As the Indians try to earn a split of this doubleheader with two more to follow over the next two days here in Chicago. Well, yeah, that's what you hope when you come out. It, it's tough to win two in one day. You like to win the first one and hopefully at least give yourself a chance, but they bounce back in the game two very well. And the long ball, Cody Anderson, the two keys in game two right now to this point. They need three more outs. Malky Cabrera, two hits on the night for Chicago. Fastball missed inside. Tomorrow night it's a battle of the undefeated as Josh Tomlin goes against Chris Sale. And then on Wednesday afternoon, we'll wrap it up with Corey Kluber and Jose Quintana matching it. Both Chicago starters in the next two days have ERAs under two. Yeah. Well, they're, they're good pitching matchups coming the next two yeah. days. They should be good ball games. You would uh, going into it, you think low scoring, you think possibly one run games, so all the little things that are going to come into play. There's Sale, who's just been phenomenal. Nine and zero in nine, nine, nine starts. I know it, but you know he he's doing it a little differently. This year yeah. now he's not, uh, not trying, trying to blow everybody away. Right, he's not trying to strike everybody out. Remember he had that string last year where it was ten or more strikeouts in what eight straight games yeah. or something like that. He's saving it. He's completing games. He already has three, and he's just he's pitching.
Now the 2 2. Nice pitch. Santana will flip it to Cody. That's what Santana can take for himself right there. No need to flip it. I mean, there's a, he could have beat him to the back. Just go ahead and tag it. One down on the night. Jose Abreu will be the batter 0 for 3. Jose Abreu 0 for 3 tonight. And a breaking ball in for strike one. <laughs> Swing and a miss. It's 0 and 2. This is about is caught in between and I've said it a couple of times for this guy that we've seen. Since his time. Playing against the Indians. Big hopper to short. Lindor. Throws out of Brayu. Two down. Well Rick you got a really neat note. On tomorrow night's pitching matchup. Redbird. Uh, called up the stats of army. Guys at Stats Research said the last time an Indian starter was 6 0 and faced an opposing starter with a record of at least 6 0 or better was 1988 when Greg Swindell at 6 0 went up against Dave Stewart, who was 7 0. Oh, yeah? He so was with Oakland back then. Okay. You haven't seen a matchup like this for the Indians in almost 30 years. Tomlin at 6 0 going up against Chris Sale. He's 9 0. I'm looking forward to it. We'll have it for you tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Alan Jensen will start it with Indians Live, live here in Chicago at 7 30. Speaking of which, we'll be up next with Indians Live post game. You know, and when you play a doubleheader, if you have to split, you'd rather win the second one because that gives you yes. momentum yeah. for the next day. You, you know? go to bed feeling a little better. If you better. can't win both, right. you, be, you better win the last one. Andre's going to try to corral Rajay Davis for Indians Live. Oh, he's yeah. 3 and 0. Oh. Always entertaining. Strike to the Andre, outside. Andre, we're court. giving you the 3 0 count. We'll <laughs> see if you can hit it out of the park like he did. Green we're light, get, Rajay. Yeah, we're going to give you the opportunity. He's the new green light project. I think Andre was taking a nap in game two down there. <laughs> he said, no, no, no. The 2 2. Just a bit outside. And a full count. Indians fans having some fun here in the nightcap. The 3 2 pitch is a little bit low, and this one continues. Sevilla will bat. 0 for 3 on the night with a runner aboard and two down on the night. Lori moves into scoring position. Do have a three man shift on the right side for Avila.
strike to the inside corner. Avila gave up on it. But that ball worked its way over the inside corner. And Chicago down to their last strike. Cody steps away. Reset. With a runner at second and two down in the night. A bit inside. And we're even at two and two. Should Avila reach, obviously El Garcia would be next. Now Avila wants time. Why not after six and a half hours? What's a few more minutes? Now the 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. He struck him out to end the ball game. And the Indians split the doubleheader with Chicago. They started the day two and a half games back in the Central Division, and that's the way they finished the day. As Cleveland goes to 23 and 20, and Chicago is now 27 and 19. Cody Anderson with a strong performance gets the win. Seven innings, one run allowed on five hits, did not walk a batter and struck out nine. Eric Johnson will take the loss for Chicago as he was tagged for five runs on six hits in six and two thirds innings. So a kind of a heartbreaker for the Indians to start the day Rick but they they finished strong and they did it with the long ball six home runs yeah. this afternoon well, and tonight combined like we see we showed you that stat that you got to go back to 73 six homers in the double header. They certainly helped in, in game two Davis is 3 0 it gave them the lead and you know. Cody Anderson called up to make this start today was was great. It was it was a treat. It was fun to watch him pitch today. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, if it, if any.